this is Julia Malloy, business expert for the interior design industry. Hope you're doing well today. Today we are on day eight of our Get Organized program. And hopefully you have been following along and you have, at the very first day, downloaded this design firm systems checklist. Okay, because this is important. We are checked off a lot of these and we are on day eight, which if you should know, uh, is the non-compete agreement. So we went over all of the, the key roles of a boutique model firm. And I wanted to help you along in terms of some of the structure um, that will be required to uh, bring on and manage and run that boutique model firm in, in terms of systems and like organizational things, hard systems and soft systems. Um, confidentiality and non-compete agreement don't necessarily fall in line with like office supplies and filing and job descriptions, but I wanted to add it in because it's something that I find really important and it's something that a lot of people don't already have. Um, I'm not legal counsel, so this is uh, technically a legal document that you will have to have your um, your attorney look over. Make sure it's appropriate and covers all the bases and it's comprehensive and appropriate for your state. So um, I don't, I don't uh, claim to be legal counsel, but this will definitely this is good this will get you started for sure okay so one of the things I've done with this doc is I have um, I've combined a couple things um, there's two two main things that I find are really important in a new hire and by the way this doc needs to be signed unless you've already got these people on on staff there's not much you can do about it but um, when you're doing a hiring this is something, this document, this confidentiality non-compete, this is something that you have them hire a, a sign along with their offer letter. Okay, because there is argument that says, well, I was already working there and I didn't want to get fired, so I had to sign this thing um, that was a condition of employment, but I was already working for them, so it's like, it's not, you know, it's really hard to back up in court. Not that you really generally are doing that, but... Um, you want it to be as binding as possible if you're going to bother doing it at all, right? So this is something that basically says that anything that happens at your company stays at your company. All documents, all information, all client, all vendor, all photographs, um, all digital records, client lists, reports, notes, data, all that stuff, drawings, they all are property of the company and is not to be shared or used or distributed or borrowed or anything without your express permission okay and it also says that they're not to divulge any information on the client um, and especially when you've got higher end clients a lot of times those higher end clients and more celebrity level clients they are giving you an NDA um, anyway a, a confidentiality rather uh, um, uh, agreement that their lawyers send over. I do that a, a lot with my clients because I'm working with them. I've got to I've got to sign these too. But really, it's nice to put in protections that your your employees aren't allowed to talk about what happens with clients and on projects and even in your office with other team members or you. Um, and I have seen, I've you know I work with people all over the country and there's a lot of um, small towns. And so everyone kind of knows each other. So if something happens in the office and then you go home and you share that with your husband, which is a pretty natural thing to do, but in small towns, your husband is golfing with the boss of the client. You know what I mean? Like it's too tightly knit of a community for any of that kind of stuff to go out. So nothing. What happens at your company, it's like Vegas, right? What happens at your company stays at your company. I don't care. I don't care if you want to talk about it. You just can't, and you signed a document. You signed a document before you got hired as a condition of your employment, which makes it more binding. Okay. So this is just kind of lays it out. In, in it's legal, but it's not too intimidating. It's just a one-pager. So uh, certainly there's more extensive, and your lawyer or your attorney can certainly create a more extensive document. Uh, but I felt like this was a really nice 
you know, not too intimidating, not like a seven page NDA non compete document for them to sign prior to hire because that can get kind of scary. And it also says that they can't like just leave and take all your clients and offer their services to your client base and that kind of thing, which can happen. It does happen, unfortunately. So this is some protection. Um, and I just thought you might benefit from that. If you've got one already, you can still download this and see if there's anything in here that yours does not have. Um, so I just thought you might like it, help you on your journey. So anyway, that's all I have to say on that. Um, and I hope you find it helpful. Okay. And I will see you tomorrow. We're going to talk more nitty gritty process flow. What are we doing tomorrow? We are doing, oh, <laughs> you're going to like this one. Uh, well, for those of you who have this, you know, this is very common. Um, just trying to help you out a little bit in terms of your team following some rules. And, you know, there's a ton of rules and code of conduct and all of that stuff. But the one I'm bringing to mind and sharing with you tomorrow is probably the one that comes up the most often. And that is um, your cell phone texting, instant messaging, social media on company time protocol. That's never come up for you, right? No, never. <laughs> anyway, I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining me today. And until next time, be bold.